everybody to our final presentation of today's Marketing Showcase Online. Thank you so much for sticking around and joining us. You're in for a treat because we're joined by brand new speaker, Anna Downs, who's presenting her talk on how to reach, connect and engage with your prospects via video marketing. Um, we had a rehearsal last week and I've seen a little bit of this talk and it really is a good one. There's, there's lots of tips that you guys can take away from it. So have your pens at the ready and make sure they're filled with ink as I'm sure you're going to get through lots of paper taking notes for this one. On that point, we are recording the session so there really is no need to even take notes because you can watch it all back via recording um, and anything you missed or you want to catch up on, use that recording. Um, that's no problem. We'll send those out early next week. Quickly, you've probably all seen one of our webinars today, but just in case you haven't, we're going to be using the chat below to speak to myself and your other colleagues. So if you can put in there, hello, how today's going, give me some feedback, just let me know you're there, that's great. I can see a few people doing that already, so at least I know I'm not speaking to an empty room. Um, and aside from that, you've got the Q&A function, which is where we're going to store our questions for Anna at the end. And it'd be great if you have got any questions about video marketing that you do want to speak to Anna about. I'll ask them on your behalf, and it's normally a really good, uh, interesting way of having a discussion at the end of this talk. So without further ado, I'm going to stop waffling and I'm going to hand you over to our very capable speaker, Anna Downs from Video Sherpa. Hi, thanks a million, Ashley. Thank Hello, you. everybody. Uh, really excited to be with you here this afternoon. Um, Video Sherpa. Uh, I'm the co-founder and the CEO of Video Sherpa, and our entire mission in life is to help companies to bring video marketing in-house, to be able to manage the creation of their own content, to do that in a very easy way, in a very effective way, streamlined and cost-effective. And what I want to share with you this afternoon is some ideas for how different use cases for video can be applied to any organization, regardless of the sector you work in, the size of the team, or the audience that you're trying to reach. Um, and what we're also going to look at is obviously a lot of people will already have rolled up their sleeves and will be, will be creating content internally. Um, so we'll share some ideas there. But for people who are yet to take that leap and start creating their own content, I want to reassure you how achievable that is now and to show you some very simple tips and tricks that you can use to create video content yourselves um, and to really take ownership of of that messaging, of the story, of the schedule, of the budget, everything, and to be able to, to reach and engage and connect with your audiences, which is what we're all about. So I'm going to share my screen, and I'm going to show you a short presentation, and as Ashley said, happy to take questions at the end. So video content. And I hope I'm sharing my screen here. You might just let me know that you can see it okay. Anna, that one's gone off now. You did have it shared okay, but it's just gone off. It yeah. Okay, perfect. Let's go again. That's all right. That's it. There we perfect. go. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Okay, lovely. So video content. For those who haven't done a lot of video content in their organizations, I really just wanted to take a moment to show how important it actually is because obviously if you're thinking about doing some social media engagement and the choice is between putting together some social media posts just using images and text versus creating some video content, really obviously there's a little bit more work involved in the video content, there's a bit more planning, a little bit more resource needs to go into it. So is it really worth your while? And I think it's very clear at this point that it genuinely is. So, I mean, we as consumers, we're spending an average of an hour and a half a day watching online videos. It is the form of content that people are actively searching out most of the time. And whether we are actually looking for it on YouTube or looking for it on people's websites or just stumbling across it on social media, it's what gets us to stop scrolling. It's what gets us to pay attention. So you need to give your audience information in the format that they're most agreeable to, to receiving it. So video is, is really important from that perspective. But not only do people want to see it, they will engage with it. And typically up to four times more engagement will come from video content rather than other forms of either text or image base. And not just in terms of posts, but that's equally true for email campaigns, internal communications campaigns. We're just much more likely to, to stop, to watch, to engage with video content. 
So if you're looking to increase your reach and your engagement rates, then you really should consider using more video content. It's very powerful in terms of getting us to take an action. So we've all probably been motivated to actually move something into the cart and buy it, having seen a little video. But it's not just in terms of purely commercial online sales and e-commerce, whether you are trying to motivate people to download a white paper, for example, or sign up to a webinar, whether it is to book a meeting, whatever action you want people to take, video is far more effective at getting them to actually take that action and, and, and take ownership of what it is. And then finally, if your videos are more around information sharing, maybe they're thought leadership pieces, maybe they're advisory or tutorials, then video is much more effective in terms of getting that information into people's heads and they'll remember far more of what you have said and what you've shown them rather than what they just read. So really, I think, you know, across the board, no matter what purpose you want to use video for, it is going to be hugely effective. So if you're looking at, well, what resources do we have? What budget and what time frame do we have? And if it's a toss up between creating some short videos or just doing some sort of text and visuals, I think it's well worth your while placing some of those resources into video marketing. And I just want to really reiterate this point. I know I've kind of said it briefly there. There is a big difference when people are actively looking for content on your YouTube channel, on your Facebook page, on your website, in an email, and video is contained there. People are very responsive to video in those formats, and they're likely to give it more time and more consideration. And that is to be weighed up against purely social media posting which is where people just discover your videos as they scroll through their feed, whether that's on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or any other channels you're using. And so there's a different dynamic. You need to move the dial a lot faster in order to get them to stop scrolling and to stay engaged with it. So just bear in mind always the, the platform you're going to share the video on, because that will determine how long your video will be, how, you know, how strong a hook you need at the very, very start, and what's, what will be your audience's appetite for that video. So just always bear that in mind when you're planning a, your next piece of video. Now, bringing content in-house is so achievable. You really don't need to invest massively in a lot of equipment. And um, there are so many good cameras. Our smartphone cameras are really so high quality at the moment. Uh, a very small investment in a gimbal or a tripod and some lavalier mics, 200 pounds, and you're absolutely set up to start creating your own video content. In Video Sherpa, we actually supply this to all our clients to get them up and running. But what we often find speaking to clients is when they start thinking about video content, or even maybe they've dipped their toe and they're starting to create videos, it's very often maybe just one or two types of videos. They kind of get into a groove and they make the same kind of videos all the time. And what we spend a lot of time with our clients doing is really brainstorming. Well, what are the other ways that you can share video and what other use cases can you apply so that your video marketing strategy is really robust and varied and exciting. And it's got a lot of different content for different channels, different audiences at different points of the funnel so that you can kind of keep reaching them and nurturing them and engaging them. So I just wanted to spend a minute to kind of explore a few of these ideas. Some will be very obvious. Obviously, customer tutorials and product demos, they're some of the most common forms of video content that we all start with and dip our toe into. But there's plenty others as well that aren't that difficult to achieve. And even now, when a lot of us are working from home, there aren't maybe events on, there's still a lot that we can do ourselves internally with, with you know, limited budgets and limited resources. So let's just have a look at some of these. So interviews, this is particularly a um, good idea if you're trying to position your company as thought leaders in a space, or if you have a new innovation, if you have something new and you want to position either people in your team, or you want to do interviews with some industry leaders and really align yourself with the, the thought leaders in that space. So doing these kind of interviews and Really, it can be very easily done now just on Zoom, share your screen, record it. You might need to, to top and tail it a little bit and you can use an editing software to do that. 
Um, but it really is a very an informative piece of content. And I think the, the main point here is to be careful of time. You want to keep it engaging. You don't want it to drag on too long. So just be aware of your audience and what you think their appetite is going to be. Whether a 20 minute conversation is going to be much more effective than something that's 40 minutes and perhaps a little too long winded. One of the ones I love is the ask me anything. So this is a great way to engage with your audience and try and elicit from them what is it that they'd love to know about your organization. You can also look at the, the kind of frequently asked questions page on your website or from your customer support team and your customer success team. What is it that your clients or your potential customers usually ask? And then create a series of videos that proactively address those issues. But you can also just run a poll on social media and just ask people, you know, if you could ask anything about our organization, what would it be? And you'll actually get some great ideas there that you can respond to. And of course, the beauty of that is, you know that your efforts aren't wasted because you're creating the content that they've explicitly asked for. So that's a really good one. And it's something that you could go back to again and again over time. Behind the scenes content, we all have a great appetite for this because we all are kind of nosy. We like to know what's going on in another company. How does something come together? And this is particularly good. Obviously events aren't happening right now, but it is a great one. You know, if you are gonna be running a, a day long event or a morning event in the future, having some behind the scenes footage ready to go that morning on, on you know, the preparations behind the scenes, and being able to drip feed content throughout the day is a great way to keep social media engagement going in, um, in accompaniment to the event that's happening. But we also love to know how things come together. So if you are involved in selling product, it's like, well, how is it actually made? You know, how is, what's the process like? What's the design like? What's the, um, you know, the actual ingredients that goes into it or the making of it? All of those kind of things are kind of fascinating. So. Think about how behind the scenes videos could be appropriated to your organization and see how easy it could be to put that together. Case studies are a really valuable one. They're slightly different to testimonials. Obviously a testimonial, the focus is almost purely on the customer. A case study though is a bit broader and it's looking at the input that your team put into that customer's success. So it's probably a marriage of some internal interviews with the team that were involved and the customer and the success that you generated for them. But they can be really nice and rich and really effective for prospective customers. Product comparison is another one that I think people in, in a retail space um, should really engage more with. For example, um, I'm just going to pick a high street store, something like uh, PC World or Curry's. I mean, we can all remember going on and, you know, you need advice from someone on, the, on the, one of the sales assistants about two or three different products because you're not quite sure which one fits your needs best. And to be honest with you, going on the website and just reading a load of spec about three or four different laptops, if I'm in shopping for a new laptop, that really doesn't help me hugely. And I have to do a lot of work to figure out which is the right one. So for people in the retail space to take ownership of that and actually make these little product comparison videos, I think would be hugely helpful, really engaging content, doesn't need to be very long, doesn't need to be very involved, is very, very achievable for people. User-generated content can be enormous and we've seen companies and brands use this to great effect. Um, definitely people, I suppose dealing more with millennial audiences have embraced this a lot. You see a lot of colleges and universities using it, um, maybe a lot of events, sporting events tend to use it. But I think actually it can apply in lots of different ways. And again, it's about taking stock of who your audience is. Is there an opportunity for them uh, to invite them to share some content? And you can then either push that out on its own or incorporate it into some of your videos and really get that objective third party recommendation, which is just so effective these days. So look, there's some ideas. Um, it's not an exhaustive list, obviously, and it does depend on the sector you're in. One of the things that we're offering in our goodie bag is a 30 minute marketing video marketing um, review. So we're very happy to, if anyone wants to, to avail of that, get in touch with us. 
Um, I think the, there's a poll there where you can say you're interested in doing it. And we're very happy to brainstorm this with you and look at what different types of videos can you reasonably and effectively achieve in-house um, that really start to broaden out the kinds of videos that you're using for different channels, different audiences at different parts of the sales process. Okay, so content ideas are obviously the first thing you need to factor in, but then, and I can't move my screen on. Hmm. There. So content ideas are the first thing. Very, very, very quickly followed by who is your audience. And really, for every single piece of video content you push out there, focusing on who the specific audience for that piece of content is, is crucial. Like, I mean, I'm, I know I'm speaking to the, to the uh, choir here. We all know marketing content that's trying to reach everybody can very often fall between all stools and not really have the impact that we were hoping for. So it's always worth bearing in mind how to tailor your video content for specific niche audiences. And the best way to do this, obviously, is to have slightly different versions, to maybe A-B test your videos or to have slightly tweaked information um, going out on different videos on different platforms or in, in different use cases. So I, I really think it's important in the same way that we, we personalize our content as much as possible in other ways, that your video marketing strategy really does a deep dive on who your audience is, break it out and make sure your content is specific and tailored for each of those audiences. Now on Video Sherpa, we do a lot of work around this um, and we help people to kind of duplicate and A-B test their content to make sure that they aren't doing this broad brush strokes and that they are getting uh, the right information in video format in front of the right people. So well worth putting some effort into that. And the next thing you do is you storyboard. Now, storyboarding sometimes gives people the heebie-jeebies and they get a bit afraid and they think, oh my God, this is going to take me ages. It doesn't have to. This can be done, you know, single A4 sheet. What you're trying to do is distill your messaging and then match that up to the best visuals that are going to illustrate your point. That's the point of the storyboard. And the reason we storyboard is that so everybody involved in the project is on the same page, that everyone is crystal clear about what needs to be filmed, what are the messages that are going to be shared, and that everything is captured so that when we come, sit down to edit our video, that we're not looking for the clips that weren't filmed on the day or that specific message was never um, created or captured and obviously slowing the whole process down. So spending a little bit of time in prep, storyboarding, getting that signed off on by everybody involved will make the whole process a no a lot smoother for you. Now, strong visuals and clear messaging. This is obviously obvious, um, but when people start creating their own videos for the first time, it's probably one of the things that they might struggle with. Strong visuals, what do I mean by that? And clear messaging. One of the things when we are um, training our, our clients in terms of filming their own content, we really try and get them to think about what encapsulate a strong image for their brand, for their company, and for the video they're trying to get across. We find the tendency initially is to try and capture everything. Um, and really what you're trying to do is get people to edit. Edit visually what is going to work, what is going to really move your audience to take the action that you want them to take, and to be a bit more disciplined about your videoing. When people start out creating content, um, as I said, sometimes it's a case of let's shoot everything that moves and then we'll figure out in the edit how it's going to come together. And actually, that's going to be a real waste of your time. You're going to spend too long filming, too long uploading and editing your shots. Whereas if you decide in advance what are the strongest possible visuals we can use and just focus on getting those as well as you can. Capture those perfectly and then you're ready to go. The same discipline and editing applies to your messaging. You really need to distill your message and make sure it's delivered very succinctly and very clearly to your audience. When we talk about interview videos, customer testimonials, this can be tricky. It can be difficult sometimes to work with clients to help them distill their message down, but it is actually important to put the time in because what you're trying to do always is deliver the most succinct message to your audience. 
and to get people to refine what they're trying to say so that they're not repeating themselves, they're not waffling. It's not going to be a seven minute video, whereas a 60 second video is actually what you need. So again, along with your storyboard, really putting some thought into your exact messaging and the strongest visuals uh, is going to make life a lot easier when it comes to editing your video together. Now, for people who haven't done a lot of filmmaking themselves, the next few tips I'm going to share with you are very practical around actually filming. So, I mean, with Video Sherpa, our platform, you film everything using our app on your smartphone. We give you the gimbal so everything is nice and smooth. And then we do training to help people get comfortable filming. What do they need to film and how to edit it together? And one of the things we drive people crazy talking about is light, using light. And natural light is always going to be your biggest friend. But the main piece of advice around filming is that the light source falls onto the person. So you can see here that the light above me, this probably wouldn't be the place that I would do filming if I was, you know, recording a, an interview with somebody. What you're trying to do is make sure that the light is evenly falling on the person. You don't want them backlit. You don't want silhouettes. You don't want spotlights over people's heads that create nasty shadows. And we won't thank you for it later. Um, so it's really important to just make sure that you're filming in a nice, bright space. You mightn't be always near a window or a light source. That's absolutely fine. If you're on the shop floor, the factory floor, just make sure the person is really, really well lit. And that will make the end video look a lot better. A poorly lit video is hard to improve upon. So put a bit of effort in to get the right spot. And then the next point is about stabilizing your footage. So I've already mentioned a gimbal. This is an image of one here. Um, we supply clients with the DJI Osmo, which is a really good piece of tech. These are very affordable. You know, maybe 100, 150 pounds will get you a really good gimbal. And it's almost like a motorized selfie stick. So it allows you to pan left and right and up and down. It allows you to capture really lovely, smooth quality footage without investing in massive steady cam rake. Getting that smooth quality footage will instantly make your videos look an awful lot more professional. And they also come with their own mini tripod, which is perfect. But if you did want to invest in a tripod, again, there's loads of tripods on the market. Less than £100 is going to get you something really, really good. And having this stable footage is what you need as the baseline. You know, the, gone are the days where a shaky handheld camera is going to work. That's absolutely not what you want for your brand. So always stabilize. And our advice would be, unless you are specifically creating content for Instagram, then always film landscape. It just gives you an awful lot more flexibility in terms of what you can do with that content. You can always share it on Instagram, but if you film in vertical mode, then that footage isn't going to be as flexible when you want to share it on other channels. Or if you want to incorporate some of those clips into another video, it's really not going to work for you. So rule of thumb, film in landscape. Now framing. Framing is what the professional videographer will obviously do instinctively. And what we've done here is we've put grid lines on the screen to really help people to get their framing right, because having a visually pleasing image is just so effective. And it really, again, elevates the quality of what you're shooting. So it's, it's called the rule of thirds. I'm sure loads of you will have heard of it. And the basic principle is that your main subject, either a person or the, the key focus of your frame, should be positioned where the grid lines intersect. And that is the most visually pleasing arrangement. And it draws in the viewer. It also gives you more space for graphics, text, logos, and so on. So the rule of thirds is the best way to do your framing, especially when you're starting out. Now, obviously, a lot of rules are there to be broken, and you're going to see loads of videos that discard the rule of thirds, and that's absolutely fine. But when you're starting out, just position all of your videos in this way, and I guarantee you it'll look a lot more professional. Now, a mix of shots. I really, really believe this is one of the easiest ways that companies creating their own content in-house can make sure their videos look as good as a professional. Because as consumers, we are very sophisticated in terms of what we're used to seeing in video content. 
So you need to make sure that you are giving people equally good quality content. And one of the easiest ways to do this is to mix up your shots. Now, when people start creating their own videos for the first time, there can be a shyness about getting in close. There's a reluctance to kind of get right in close and show those lovely detailed shots. But actually, you need to leave that shyness at the door because this is the footage that people are looking for. And it's a mixture of wide, mid and close up shots that will help drive your story and it'll help the viewer understand the progress of the narrative and what it is you're trying to tell them. So again, in Video Sherpa, we make a big deal out of this and we actually, our filming app will make you film wide shots, mid shots and close ups. Regardless, just bear it in mind for every wide shot you're going to film, try and mix it up with a mid shot or a close up as well. And it'll really, really elevate the quality of what you're doing and make it visually much more engaging for the audience. So hopefully they'll last right through to the very end, which is obviously what you want. Good quality sound is essential. Poor quality sound is almost impossible to really remedy in your edit. So it is well worth the time getting it right before you start. Now, a lavalier mic, very, very cheap thing to buy. Um, we, again, we supply them to all our clients. You can get them online for 20 or 30 pounds. Absolutely not a big investment and they make a huge difference. But it's not just having the mic on the person. You need to be aware of the ambient noises all around. And very often when we are filming in a place that we're very familiar with, we might tune these noises out because we're just so used to hearing them. So, as an example, if you are filming in your office space, you might not even pick up on noises from machinery, like even the fridge, the photocopier, the hum from servers and laptops, uh, from air conditioning units. Actually close your eyes and listen to the ambient noises around you and make sure you're filming and recording in a spot that isn't too noisy. That'd be my first rule of thumb. If you're filming outdoors, Wind can be a real nightmare. You might not even feel it very much. Uh, it doesn't have to be blowing a gale for the microphone to pick up on quite a lot of wind. And I know we've all seen those videos. They're just unintelligible because the wind is so noisy. Now your lapel mic will certainly help with that. But at the same time, try and get your subject into a nice sheltered spot so you're not having to deal with it. But other ambient noises that you might need to be aware of include uh, alarms, traffic, dogs, um, just a lot of noise from the street. At the same time, ambient noise can be brilliant. If, you're, if you are filming content from an event, uh, you know, the sound of applause, the sound of people laughing and chatting can be fantastic and at a low level un underneath your video. So it's not a rule of thumb that says never record any of that noise, but just make sure that your interview pieces are always fully audible above them. Other things to, to remember are um, necklaces, jewelry, scarves, anything that's going to rub against that microphone. And you might not even pick up on it in the day, but it'll create that horrible um, sound in your video. And it's impossible to get rid of that. So rule of thumb, attach the mic, do a sound check, make sure you can hear them clearly, and then you're good to go. And don't if you're, if you're moving around from location to location, always do a second sound check in a new location. You don't always have to do a piece to camera though. Um, adding a voiceover is a really good way to get across the same level of information without necessarily having to have someone on camera. And you may have people in your team or customers or, you know, who are very shy about being on camera. And the minute you point a camera at them, they freeze. But actually they might have a gorgeous voice and they might be perfect to use as a voiceover rather than a piece to camera. So just be open to that idea. It doesn't always have to be face to face and particularly true in shorter form video, I would say, or if it's a tutorial video, if you're showing a process, you can just show the person at the very start and then go to voiceover for the rest of it. So it's a much easier way for them to deliver their messaging rather than being on screen. Subtle branding. Anybody who is defaulting to standing in front of a pull-up banner and, and shooting all their videos, just standing in front of their branded banner, really needs to move the dial and start thinking about doing it in a more creative way. Um, 
subtle branding, you know, it, it's it's just so important. Um, there's so many different ways to do it. Obviously, the image I'm showing you here, he's got the, it's a brewery. They've got their name on the big brewing tanks and he's got his name on his t-shirt. Um, other ways, obviously, the logo can sit on screen. It could be on people's hats, clothes. It could be the coffee cup on your desk. Um, really, I think it's it's the, the more subtle the branding is, the more important, really, because anything that's very obvious, very salesy, very in your face, it's just an, it's just off putting. Um, we've all seen it and it's really it's unnecessary. Um, what I meant to add in here as well, actually, was your call to action in your videos. You shouldn't leave your call to action to the very, very end. Um, and I suppose having your branding on screen throughout is important. Because if somebody, for whatever reason, doesn't get through to the very end of your video, you don't want them to have missed the opportunity to find out who the brand is and in some way be able to contact you or follow up with you again. So it, it kind of goes hand in hand with the subtlety of the branding. Obviously, very important to have it on your videos, but just do something better than standing someone in front of a pull-up banner. Even now, I know people are working from home. People are maybe... Uh, the ability to, cre to create content in more exciting locations might be a little bit restricted, but actually there's still so much you can do in terms of creating a nice background where you can have your shots. And also, even you know, when we are all back working together or working um, more closely together, always think about the location. Does it make sense for the context of your video? So if you are doing a piece with, for example, the general manager, the CEO, don't do them in their office sitting behind their desk. You know, get them out onto the floor, get them in front of the open plan office, get them on the factory floor, get them in the foyer of the building, get them somewhere that's a little bit more visually interesting and engaging. And it'll really pay dividends because it won't be this bland corporate piece of promo that you're pushing out there. So there are some tips and tricks, hopefully. For those of you who are not yet creating your own content, it gives you some encouragement and advice in terms of how you can start. For those who are already creating their own content, hopefully there's some new ideas there for different ways that you can actually use video across the whole marketing mix. Um, and as I said, we're very happy to do any brainstorming with people who would like to just uh, investigate a little bit more and see what their marketing, video marketing strategy for 2021 could look like. So that's it. I'm happy to take any questions. And uh, thank you very, very much. Brilliant talk. I really enjoyed that one. I did say people were in for a good one and you certainly lived up to the billing. That's brilliant. Thank you.